Hey everyone, hope you guys are doing well and that you are hanging in there with the crazy weeks that we have been having lately. We just wanted to share with you some devotional thoughts from the Word of God, kind of as a, a midweek booster, and, and we are planning on doing this kind of as a midweek thing uh, for the foreseeable future. So I'm going to be sharing with you guys today uh, a passage from uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 5, uh, in the Sermon on the Mount. And so if you want to turn there in your Bible, feel free to. This is going to be Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. This is Jesus speaking, and he says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. I've been reminded recently that throughout history, Christians have been a people who, in times of sickness and chaos and crisis, we have gone towards the mess and towards the need and not away from it. For example, in the mid-200s AD, there was an epidemic that was sweeping across the Roman Empire. And it was the Christians during this time who were caring for people. There were people who were being left in the streets for dead. There were dead bodies who were being left unattended. There were reports that up to 5,000 people a day were dying in the Roman Empire at this time. And it was the Christians who went toward the need, toward the sick, and who cared for those who were hurting at their own expense. I've heard from many of you in the last couple of weeks who have sent me emails or given me calls or text messages and you've said, we want to help. We want to be a part of the solution. We want to love our neighbors in this difficult time right now. And I love your hearts. I love your passion for being the hands and feet of Jesus in our community right now. But we're all facing this tension. There's this tension of one of the best things that we can do to love our neighbors in our community right now is to stay home and to not spread this virus around. But on the other hand, we do have neighbors who have legitimate needs that are not being met. So how do we, how do we navigate that kind of tension between wanting to stay home, not spread the virus, and also love our neighbors who have needs? Well, I, I want to speak into that tension today uh, with this teaching of Jesus from the Sermon on the Mount. So let's talk about salt and light. Maybe, maybe this can have something to say to us today. Jesus says that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. What do salt and light have in common? Well, number one, they are both actively present in the world. And number two, neither salt nor light exists for its own sake. So both salt and light are actively present in their different environments and neither exists for its own sake. So first of all, let's talk about salt. Salt both enhances and preserves the food that it is on. If you're like me, in the last couple of weeks you've had a good chance to catch up on some good Netflix shows and maybe even get a little ahead on some Netflix shows, um, then, then you've gotten a lot of that time in. And one of the shows that I've been watching is a, a show called Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. It's a food show that's written by Chef uh, Samin Nasrat that's based on her book that's uh, the same title. Jen and I both love food shows, we love to cook, so this has been a fun show for us. And one of uh, kind of the basic things about this show is that every culture across the world uh, basically includes those four elements 
in creating amazing and delicious foods, salt, fat, acid, and heat. And so in the episode that's about salt, uh, the, the chef Samin says this. She says, salt enhances flavor and it even makes food taste more like itself. In short, salt brings food to life. I love that. Salt makes food taste more like itself and salt brings food to life. If we are living faithfully in the world, if we're living uh, actively present lives in the world right now, then what is good and noble in the world will be brought to life. In the life that, that Jesus lived, he showed us what a truly and fully human life looks like. And everywhere he went, he brought life. He healed the sick. He brought community to the lonely. He offered relationship with God. All those basic human needs that God gave us, Jesus brought to life and he met. So salt enhances, it also preserves. So uh, it's not just a seasoning agent, it also preserves food from decay. If we are actively present in the world as followers of Jesus, then we will be preserving the world from the decay of sin and isolation and fear through our presence in the world and through God's presence working in us and through us. All right, so that's salt. Let's talk about light a little bit. So light doesn't exist for its own sake, but it makes everything around it visible. In Genesis chapter 1, the, the author in the creation account there tells us that the earth was formless and void and that darkness was hovering over the deep. So the first thing that God does is God creates light. God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw that the light was good. So if we are actively present in the world as light, then we will be shining in the darkness of the world right now. We'll be shining into areas of isolation and fear and economic uncertainty and even in the sickness of the world right now. We'll be like a light that is driving away the shadows. So both salt and light are actively present in the world. Neither exists for its own sake. Salt both enhances and preserves the food that it is on and light drives away the darkness. So let's go back to our initial tension, that, that question of how do we navigate needing to stay home for most of us, but also needing to be salt and light in the world right now. How, how do we navigate that tension? Well, I, I want to suggest three things. One is that we can be actively present in people's lives from our homes. One of the greatest forms of darkness in the world right now is isolation. And so we can be light in people's lives by calling people, by texting people, by FaceTiming, by reaching out to people from our homes right now, especially those who are isolated. Another thing we can do is we can be actively present in the world by donating. There are a lot of nonprofits right now that are experiencing uh, increased need with fewer resources. And so one thing that we can do is donate to these nonprofits and charities even from our homes online. If you live in the Franklin area, one kind of central nonprofit charity that is meeting a lot of people's needs right now is GraceWorks. And so you can go to their website and, and make a donation that will help a lot of our neighbors in need. And then lastly, we can be actively present in our neighborhoods. A lot of us probably have next door neighbors who are experiencing a lot of need right now. Uh, maybe they're having a hard time getting out and about. Think about those people in your neighborhood that you know who might be experiencing that kind of need. Can you give them a call? Can you check on them to see if they have some kind of need that you can meet? 
I also want to share with you guys a project that we're in the process of launching at FCC right now. It's a free grocery delivery project. So we have created a form that is going to go up on our website where anyone in the community can fill out this form if they need groceries delivered to their home. This is not just for FCC families. This is not just for Christians. This is for everyone. So we would love for you to share this form on your social media. Let's get this word out in the community that if there is anyone who has the need of groceries being delivered to their house, we have a team of people here at the church who would love to go pick up those groceries, drop them off on people's uh, front doorstep, and just be the hands and feet of Jesus to them uh, in that really simple way. If you would love to be a part of that team, then uh, just shoot me an email if you want to be a part of delivering those groceries to people's homes and we can get you on that email list. Neither salt nor light exists for its own sake. Jesus showed us in the life that he lived that he came not to be served, but to serve and to give up his life. As his followers, we are called to do the same. I just want to close with uh, some words of an old hymn that have been on my mind this week. And this can kind of be our closing prayer. Lord, melt the clouds of sin and sadness. Drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. God bless you all. Hope to see you soon.